Hi everyone, welcome to another coronavirus update. If you're sick and tired of hearing about the coronavirus or saturated with information, we do understand. Uh, in fact, there's a term that's been thrown around uh, called pandemic fatigue. And I think to a certain degree, we've all experienced some of this, right? Yeah, that's true. And we wanted to remind everyone that the pandemic is only starting. If you look at the history of pandemics around the world, whether you start counting from January or whether you start counting from March, we're only at the beginning of mm. the pandemic. And pandemic fatigue, like Dr. Deliello said, can lead to complacency and cavalier behavior with lethal consequences. And we do have a responsibility as your primary healthcare providers to arm you with as much accurate data as possible, even if it means going against what you may hear in the mainstream media. So you can make calculated, educated decisions for yourself on how to move forward. It's so true. And Dr. Bin, it sort of feels like it did right at the beginning of the pandemic, mm, right? You know, so when we just when we just started, we didn't really know much about the coronavirus. We knew that there was a virus affecting people in China. Here in North America, we seem to be okay. We didn't really know too much about it. Uh, you know, so everyone's going to the grocery stores, they're going to the gym, they're going to the mall without any problem. The thing is when we started testing, that's when we really figured out you know the gravity of the situation that people were affected here it was only with that testing and looking at what's going on in the hospitals that we really knew what was going on and you know maybe had we done more testing or started testing sooner we could have uh, prevented some of the 5300 deaths that we've had here in Quebec yes exactly think about that number if we look at the deaths per 1 million inhabitants, Quebec is the second worst place wow. in the world. Uh, you don't hear that a lot. We're in fact twice as bad as the US, and they're seeing a large increase in the number of cases. Let's take this a little bit more globally now. Let's look at the pandemic, uh, like Olympic uh, marathon winners for uh, pandemic control. Yeah. Australia has 102 deaths total. I'm not talking about yesterday. I'm talking about in the last six months. Uh, Canada has 8,300 and Quebec has 5,300 deaths total to date. That's a lot of lives sacrificed. Yeah, those numbers are really staggering. And it's strange because now we're just going out, everything's open, uh, you know, we're being told that the cases are dropping day by day. So, Dr. Juman, do you think that we learned from our mistake like that you know, now we're testing everybody. I mean, we're the second worst place in the world. You hmm. think we'd be testing like crazy? Great question. The unfortunate answer is no. Uh, Quebec aimed to test 14,000 people a day all across Quebec. In fact, we've been testing about 5,000 people wow. a day. For comparison, let's look at Ontario yesterday. Tested 25,000 people. Even if you take into account their larger population, they're still testing three times as many people as we are here in Quebec. And Toronto is still in lockdown. Mm. And uh, there's data coming out of Toronto now that the 20 to 30 age group is the fastest rising group now. Um, we're really getting a false sense of security yeah. here. How are we supposed to make educated decisions about the safety for ourselves and our families if we're closing our eyes to the data. It's like we're flying blind. Ah, it's so true. It, it's as if we decided uh, all of a sudden that we weren't gonna, we were gonna stop counting uh, all of the deaths caused by motor, motor vehicle accidents. So now we're not even looking at them, we're not counting them. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden your car is any safer or the road is any safer. It's just we're not looking and interpreting that data. You know, why, why do you think we're doing this? So the obvious answer is economics. Now, everyone talks about that. Mm. We need things to go back to normal. We need people to go back to work. The government can't keep handing out the checks. Uh, I need to put food on the table. I need to take care of my family, etc., etc. But the less obvious answer may be related to the different types of models adapted by public health. It's, it's true. Uh, I mean, in terms of public health experts, they've known for a long time that the abstinence-only model doesn't work. 
So it doesn't work for substance abuse, it doesn't work for sexually transmitted infections, and I guess it doesn't work for pandemics either in terms of self-quarantine, that completely abstaining from any kind of social interactions doesn't work. So they adopt a different type of model, a risk reduction model. So that means uh, drinking in moderation for substance use, using condoms for sexually transmitted infections, and putting on a mask for the coronavirus. Exactly. Countries that are doing well have near 100% mask wearing, not on an as-needed basis, not I'm going to put on my mask if there's 50 people, but if there's 45, we don't need a mask anymore. Now, more and more places are legislating mandatory mask wearing. Whereas here in Quebec, we're in fact reducing social distancing rules. There was a study that came out of Ottawa, Ottawa that predicted a 20% reduction in social distancing will lead to a second wave bigger than the first. So think about that for a second. That means if just one in five of us don't follow the rules, we're in big trouble. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to look back two months from now and say, uh, if only we knew Mrs. Smith your ICU admission could have been avoided, it looks like, in fact, you were, at the beginning, one of the cases at the beginning of the second wave. Oh, it's true. We really don't want to look back and say something like that. Um, another term uh, that we've been hearing is uh, called the coronavirus infodemic. <laughs> so where we're constantly being overwhelmed by a barrage of information, much of which isn't vetted, isn't evidence-based, uh, it's really just preprint, uh, which is influencing what the population and what governments are doing. And honestly, they're not really skilled to be filtering that data. You know, everybody from my grandmother to your mailman is a coronavirus expert. <laughs> Uh, it's true. I mean, I love planes. I love to read about planes, especially military planes, the Apache attack helicopter, uh, the stealth bomber, the F-16. Uh, I love reading about that, but that does not make me a pilot. <laughs> well put. Um, in the next coming days, we're going to be p publishing uh, another information document, which is going to highlight the different levels of activity and the risks that's associated with each of these activities, and what we think is an acceptable amount of caution to take, depending on your age and your risk factors. Now, given everything that we've just discussed, we here at Cardiogenics have a lot of unique factors to consider. We have your health at heart, we have our health to consider and a multitude of variables to calibrate on a daily basis. It's true. And we've been here throughout the pandemic managing your urgent needs in clinic, non-urgent needs over the phone. And you'll be hearing from us soon uh, regarding how we're going to safely expand our in-clinic visits. So that's it for today. To all the dads, I want to wish you all an early happy birthday, happy Father's Day. <laughs> Or happy birthday if it's your birthday. Or happy birthday too. So we hope everyone stays safe, celebrate safe, and be safe.